Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at HP Discover 2015. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the event and extract the signal from the noise. We're here at HP Discover for the sixth year. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Paul Durzan, VP of Product Marketing, Converge Data Center. Welcome to the Cube. Great, thank you to be here. So you guys got a big announcement yeah. coming on. Converge Data Center's hot trend, software yes. defined data center, software-led infrastructure, software-defined infrastructure, software-defined storage. Software is really the key to success these days. However, you still need hardware to run stuff on. Absolutely. Whether you're in the data center or in the cloud. Tell us what's going on, what's the announcement, what is it that you guys are releasing? Absolutely, thanks. So we're here to talk to today to talk about Project Synergy and composable infrastructure. So essentially, Project Synergy is our, is our roadmap or our project we're putting around to deliver composable infrastructure. And as you said, everything really is about so software. The future's moving towards software, and when you move to that world, what you want your infrastructure to be is to be composable or to be software defined. We'll call it infrastructure as code. So you want to be able to go and, and drop a personality onto that infrastructure and have it become whatever you want it to be right before runtime. So Project Synergy is a first look now, so you're essentially releasing this. Yes. Composable infrastructure, sounds like, I love infrastructure as code, the term we use in the DevOps world. Yes. Um, what is it, why, I mean, go deeper on what, it, I mean, so that's yep. the announcement. What actually is it? Is it software, is it hardware, is it a solution? Is it a mix and match? What is it? Great, great question, and I love your tie into DevOps because when you, when you hear about what we're talking about here at Discover, we talk about the new style of business, right? And that's really the DevOps world. That's the world where IT is transitioning to making money um, and, and really becoming a value creator. And yet, most of us here are in this traditional world where we live in a world where making a change is really hard, where we have big teams, process-oriented environments to make a small change, and where it becomes really, really difficult um, to, to do what we have to do very quickly. So we, we essentially keep our environment as static as possible. The, and these are two different worlds in the data center. The DevOps world where things are moving, continuous change in the traditional environment where actually change you don't always want to have happen. So what we're doing with composable infrastructure is we're bridging the gap between the two and we're creating a common infrastructure for the traditional so you make it a lot more efficient and for the new style of business so you can actually move to the new style of business. And what that allows the traditional enterprise to do is, is become more efficient and again, have investment protection yeah. so they can move to that new style business. You know, um, five years ago I asked Pat Gelsinger who came from Intel to be an executive at EMC on theCUBE, I said, you know, being an Intel guy, I said, hey Pat, and this is more of kind of a personal question, I said, what, what comes first, infrastructure or the app? Of course we said, oh, in the infrastructure, without the infrastructure, the apps yep. don't exist. But what you're getting at here is essentially the apps are the centric of all the focus. Absolutely. And you want to have an infrastructure that can be foundational, but yet adaptive to whatever the needs are for the app, right? So the business, you might have a workflow app here, an HR app, or financial vertical, where the apps need to be dynamically provisioned or, or dealing with resources. It, that's exactly right. So when you think about a composable infrastructure, it can be optimized for the application right before runtime, so that's exactly right. You know, whether you're doing a cloud native app or a traditional app, you have the ability to very quickly instantiate that service and very quickly optimize the footprint for that application. So the hot buzzwords right now, you mentioned cloud native apps, it's hot. Yep. But a lot of people haven't really built a cloud native app, so it's still coming. That's correct. Another buzzword that's hot out there is microservices. Microservices, okay. that's right. Yeah, I love that. I was like, what the hell is that? Okay, what this teases out is this new style of development, if you will, right? So containers have been all the rage with Docker and whatnot, um, and certainly OpenStack this year, we just had OpenStack someone interviewing a lot of the HP folks on the cloud side, but, but OpenStack's getting a lot of steam right now. And the commentary at OpenStack was, containers aren't really moving that fast. And the, th the thesis was, and the observation from like Lou Tucker and a bunch of other guys was, there's no native apps out there. So it's coming. So yep. there's some, I mean, not that it's build that they will come, they're definitely coming. So tease that out, it's evolutionary. What do the customers want? Talk about that dynamic of, it's enabling, but the apps aren't yet there. Exactly, so, so just like you said, you know, cloud native is a very small percentage, but people know they have to move there, 
And right now they're in a position of building a cloud native platform or a traditional platform, two different investments, two different worlds, and there's no possibility to move in between the two. So we figured if we can build this composable infrastructure, bridge that gap, what we do is essentially we create these, these um, fluid pools of resources. So you can take these pools of resources, optimize it for the application. We put on software intelligence, so you can define that, again, that's that um, infrastructure from software right before runtime, and then we have this unified API. And the important thing about what you just said is this unified API allows you to start to take this workflow and align it to the infrastructure in a really easy manner because the unified API will cover the full infrastructure and is, is your, your point of automation. So what about sort of SLAs through that API? I mean, can you talk more about sort of service levels that I can program, uh, thresholds that I can develop, and how programmable is that infrastructure? Well, well the goal of that, that API and that infrastructure is to hook into whatever higher level orchestrator you're using. So, so for example, obviously we believe that HP Helion is a great way to go. It provides a nice vertical stack from the developer platform through you know, OpenStack cloud management into, into the infrastructure. In this case, it would be um, into composable infrastructure. So you're able to go and take whatever higher level orchestration tools you want and start to program this infrastructure, and all of that happens through your existing set of tools. Okay, so um, when, my, when I think about this discussion, I think about a customer wants to build a cloud internally yep. and potentially connect to some kind of external cloud. Yep. Um, that's sort of the play here, is it not? Um, so so that, that's absolutely a possibility. What our goal is, is really to make the creation of the, the underlying infrastructure for that cloud as easy as possible, right. and hook into whatever tools are doing that orchestration or that brokering, right? So the goal is, when, when you look at these higher level orchestration tools, there's, there's a couple things about them. Number one, normally you need a lot of them to create your automated environment. And number two, normally you need a lot of very educated people to go and, and build those services and to program that infrastructure. What we want to do is we want to allow the infrastructure person to retain control of the infrastructure by creating these personalities of the infrastructure, serve them up to the higher level orchestrators, so when the orchestrators go to put down that application, that application knows exactly what to call. The infrastructure person stays in control of the infrastructure and the um, DevOps person stays in control of the app because you don't want one doing the other, the other doing the other because that way you get a mess. So it's not a one size fits all, you've got this personality notion. Can you give us some examples of the <coughs> types of personalities that you're seeing in the marketplace where there's demand? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the goal here, again, is composable infrastructure is about creating these fluid pools of resources, defining these pools of resources through, through intelligence, and having the unified API. So for example, you can imagine being in this world where you have an ERP application, and that ERP application may be very compute intensive, so you need a compute intensive footprint for that application. So you can create that from the infrastructure. At the same time, you may have a mobile application or some type of, say, a, a, a different type of application, Hadoop application, that needs a lot of disk. Again, from this same infrastructure, you can give a compute intensive application, a compute intensive infrastructure, a disk intensive application, disk intensive infrastructure, um, and I'll do that in an automated manner. And what am I, as a buyer, what am I buying? Am I buying a, 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 a box with some software? Am I configuring that? Um, I'm interested in what the channel yep. wants you to do because the channel might want to use you know, something different, somebody's server, somebody's storage. What, what am I buying? Yeah, absolutely. So, so our composable infrastructure is, is essentially a set of infrastructure hardware with software on it. Um, and the software provides that intelligence and the API and the infrastructure is obviously the foundation of it all. And again, our goal is to give you the best end-to-end -end experience. So you could take that infrastructure block and view it as being a composable block, hook it into say HP Helion OpenStack, HP Helion Dev Platform, have a complete end-to-end -end solution, but again, we know customers like choice, so you can hook into VMware, into Microsoft, into Docker, into whatever higher level constructs you need to hook into. So am I, but is it a, is it a single SKU, or is it a, a, an open sort of choice? Is there um, something in between? Yeah, so you'll, you'll see choice. You know, we, we have a lot of different options on how we skew it up, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But really, the way, the way we view it is, view it as, as a set of composable infrastructure with a layer of, in, of software intelligence on it that you can drop onto that infrastructure to make that infrastructure. So I'm basically got a menu, make it. and I'm picking from that menu, and that's what I'm, I'm essentially developing a solution for my needs. You're creating, you're creating a set of infrastructure personalities for the application 
So when the application has to go on to the infrastructure, it takes that personality, plops it on, creates it, and then goes there. So the channel loves this. Yeah. Right, it, because yep. it gives them choice. Ab um, absolutely. It, but, but others might say, well, but I just want to keep it simple. And well, so yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a great point. And, and actually, that's the whole goal of composable infrastructure, because when you look at the environment today, for example, if I go and I want to change a piece of firmware on the NIC, Right, I'm going to bring in my server person, I'm going to bring in my network person, mm -hmm. I'm going to bring in my storage person, my virtualization person, my application person, just to change one little thing. So it's a very difficult and a very painful environment. And um, the interesting thing is when we solve for the DevOps world, which is continuous change, you actually enable those people to work very, very efficiently. So what it does is it creates a very easy and efficient environment in the traditional, and because we've already created that for the, for the DevOps world, so to speak. Paul, I got to ask you about the um DevOps, which is one of our favorite topics. Yes. People know, <laughs> people know we love the DevOps. It really is one of the most amazing innovation areas right now in the technology business. All the actions centering around DevOps, which kind of touches, you know, essentially the pillars that you guys are rolling out. Yep. It's, it's, it's wonderful, right? It's great. It's enabling more compute, which is more big data, more yep. big data in memory. Yep. I mean, it's like a lot of great action there. But what's interesting is you're talking about composable infrastructure. Yep. You got now two dimensions. You have horizontally scalable, which yes. is an open source kind of concept on commodity hardware, which you could argue industry standard hardware is basically HP, commodity yep. industry standard, you know, boxes, versus vertically integrated purpose-built solutions. Yep. So this is not a mutually exclusive situation. Can you explain, well that's my belief, yeah, but yeah. you agree that they're not mutually exclusive, and two, what is the scenario going forward for a customer who has to put their eye on the 20 mile stair on the future and say, yep. I got to build out the next generation architecture do I have to pick one? Can they both work together? Because I think I hear you saying is, it doesn't matter. You want to go horizontally scalable, that's cloud. You exactly. want to go vertically scalable, that's... That, that's exactly right. So the interesting thing today is, is you have a bunch of optimized, let's call them servers, in the case of infrastructure for applications. The goal of Composable is really to create that optimization in software. So now what you don't need is you don't need these very uh, specific products. Instead you create these pools of resources and you just pull from these pools of resources. So that underlying infrastructure, um, you want it to be reliable, right? We keep on hearing that from customers. They, they contemplate going to white boxes, and a lot of enterprise customers who've gone to complete generic white boxes have come back because they, they have reliability issues and they're not happy. So well, it's also a management nightmare too. And it's a management at, nightmare. At a certain Ex scale point. Yep, it looks good on exactly paper, right. you next thing you know you're out here, you go, well the scale points change, right? I mean, it used to be proof of concept, now you're up and running in yep. production and then it starts breaking down. Exactly. I mean that's exactly. pretty much the cloud business, right? Yep. You spin stuff up easily, lower Ex cost, you see some value, but then the double down part is scale. Exactly, so we want to do both. Like you said, we want to make the management easy, yeah. we want to bring in the reliability, but we also again want to create these fluid pools of resources that we can define and be optimized for the application and that way you, you get exactly what the application needs. Because another thing that happens in the data centers, we have stranded resources, right? We're forced to buy a footprint with what I'll call fixed ratios. A certain amount of disk, certain amount of memory, certain amount of CPU. And if you start to run out of one resource, you have to buy a whole set of resources again to get what you need. Our goal here is to have yeah. it disaggregated, a key part of creating these fluid pools. It's yeah. a disaggregated yeah. architecture, so you can get the exact application footprint. So you're the VP of product marketing. I mean, you're in a hot area. You excited about your job? I mean, you oh, must I be love pretty it. pumped. This is, this, to me, this is a future. I yeah. think, you know, I, I, you guys probably remember when converged, the converged data center yeah. came around. You know, to me, this is the next step of the converged data center. I think we, we have a great opportunity to take a leadership here, so it's What's great. next? What's, what, so you're announcing uh, Synergy, yep. first phase. What's your go to market? What are you guys doing after the event? What's happening next? Is there outreach? What's the plan? Yeah, so the plan is, like you said, we, we, we have phase one here today, which is around that composable API or the unified API. We have a partner program around it we're integrating. And then going forward, you're going to continue he to hear exciting news. We have a, we have a good roadmap and, and that's going to continue to roll out. I'm sure next time we talk, we'll so be. So it's a product yeah. development kind of milestone. A so it's not so much a go to market, bring it to partners yet. It, I mean, it's a product development Directed milestone, availability, yep. I mean, is it available? I mean, it's, um, it's be available now, yeah, it, it's absolutely. So one of the philosophies that we have is we want to make sure that as you move to the future, we preserve your investment as much as possible. So these, these open APIs, you, you can use them today, you can put them on today's infrastructure, but they'll translate as you move to the future, and they're essentially the roadmap to the future. So you guys will so engage with customers on this product. Oh, absolutely. And sell it. 
Absolutely. And who services them? Your organization or um, which yep. group? Yep, our organization can, can service it. Partners can obviously create their own right, ecosystems around it. So you're going to do some in-market activities, some marketing around it. You're going to do marketing in-market? Yes, yep. yep. And, and are you seeing, sort of, expecting to see early uptake with cloud service providers, uh, small size companies, large companies? Help us break that down. Well, so this is really, to me, this is really an enterprise play. So, a as I said, I think we solve some really significant problems for the enterprise, and that is, in the traditional environment, it's really hard to move, and they know they have to go to the future and build two, archi two, two infrastructures, and they don't want to do that. So, what we can do is we can start today with the traditional enterprise, make their enterprise more efficient, and when they have to move to the future, they already have the infrastructure and the setup to move to the future. So I really view this as an enterprise play. I think it's going to be a, a great area in the enterprise. All right, Paul, well thanks for launching on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. Congratulations. We love DevOps, it's a hot area. Of yep. course, we'll be following you guys. Um, and uh, congratulations, super, super exciting. Horizontally scalable. Vertically scalable, it's all happening, it's all in the cloud, it's all in the data center, software-defined infrastructure. It's theCUBE, we'll be right back, bringing you more signal from the noise. Go to hpdiscover.social, our new engagement site that puts all the live feeds there, all the crowd chats. Go to crowd chat, we got a big, big influencer group right now uh, streaming out a chat. Um, and again, stay with us, we'll be right back after this short break with our next guest.